in the South African car market, you want a small to medium SUV, but you're on a tight budget. Well, Haval came to the rescue, maybe could be a word for it, about a year and a half ago when they launched the H2s in South Africa. Very neat looking, small to medium family SUV, very neat lines. We tested the luxury version in automatic very early on in mid-2017. This is the base model. It's called the City in manual. 1.5 litre turbo engine, same as the luxury automatic. Puts out 105 kilowatts, 202 newton meters of torque. Neat lines, still got roof racks, still got all you want. Maybe missing some side skirts and a few effects like that, but you still have nice mag wheels. And as I said, a decent size mid SUV coming around of course to the boot area over here 230 liters in standard form according to the figures I have and of course you can drop rear seats two-thirds one-third as is completely standard on all cars interestingly and it's a question that maybe you like or don't like you do not get a luggage compartment cover with the Haval this is the budget version, so I suppose you need to take that into account. Overall, very, very neat, and in case you need reminding, of course, the 1.5 turbo. Down to two nice-looking exhausts over there that point out from the two sides, showing you a bit of performance. And on the base model, you still do have rear park distance control as well. So you've got a lot of features, even on a base model. Let's check it out a little bit on the road and on the inside. The H2 is pretty smooth and comfortable on the road. It gives a very nice ride. The 105 kilowatt four-cylinder 1.5 turbo engine sounds pretty good on paper and it's not bad performance at all. Yes, there is turbo lag. A lot of people comment and criticize turbo lag on this car and it does suffer from a bit of turbo lag. So just be very aware of that when you're planning overtaking maneuvers or anything of the sort that you may want to do especially I find second gear if you at low revs uh, you're going to feel that bit of turbo lag but it really isn't a major disaster and it certainly isn't a major problem so just live with it and be aware of it I think that's the biggest thing the other shall I call it criticism I have found with this car is definitely the gearbox is a little bit sticky when the engine is cold warms up nicely and then operates very very nicely afterwards but just again something to be aware of other than that of course you do get ABS brakes you get two airbags on this one you do go up to six on the luxury version but then that's where of course a bit of money is saved to get down to the cheaper city version and I think that is an important factor to think about and look at when you are looking at the car another item that definitely is a big difference between the two versions is the fact that on the luxury version you do get a nice center touch screen with all the touch screen features whereas on this one you do get the much smaller screen and you don't get a technology like reverse cameras navigation or something like that you pay your money you take your choices don't you but very neat center console over here you can see it looks pretty good it works very well effective air conditioning always nice to have and even keyless go and push button start on this model which I think is pretty useful pretty important and good to have as well so all those features two nice cup holders you get cloth upholstery on this model as opposed to leather but some people prefer Again, I don't think a hardship or a problem in any way whatsoever for you to think about and live with. It should really not be any sort of problem to you. Obviously, multifunction steering wheel for you to operate most of your systems, and it even includes cruise control as well. Space in the rear seat, pretty good, pretty adequate for the kind of car it is, and I don't think any young family would have any complaints about that. Haval do, of course, offer you a four-year, 60,000-kilometer service plan with a car and a five-year warranty, 100,000-kilometer warranty. So there is pretty good peace of mind. They've been around for about 18 months now in South Africa, and although they're not necessarily disclosing their sales figures, one thing I'll tell you, I'm seeing more and more of them on the road, 
And at the shopping center over the weekend, I spotted, I think it was four H2s just in one visit to a sh local shopping center. They are around and they are selling because everybody is looking for value for money these days and looking for obviously restricted budgets. Overall, this is my second experience of the H2. And generally speaking, with a couple of little foibles and a couple of little issues that I've pointed out along the way on this video, at 260,000 Rand, 259,900, you're getting a lot of car for your money. You're looking in this kind of market, you're looking on a budget, you want a new car, you've got to go and check out Haval. It's just a no-brainer these days. For Motor Matters, I'm Alan R, and I'll see you next time. One other point a lot of people have been commenting about is fuel economy on the H2 in particular. All I can say is we've done 400 plus kilometers on this test and a lot of commuting, a lot of traffic, a lot of that kind of usage. And you can see 8.1 liters per hundred for the full period is a lot better than some of the other figures I've been reading and certainly not out of line for a car of the sort.